Wayne, the ultimate bad boss at Amazon. That's ridiculous. Like everyone who drives has to stop suddenly sometimes. Yeah. And it's yeah. like not nothing like to stop that big vehicle. It's probably not a uh, fun for the driver, even without the infraction, having to slam on the brakes in that big ass fucking vehicle, like mid toss of the package to my front door. They're taking a picture and getting out of there, you know, cause they have no time to be nice and, and talk or anything. I don't think that consumers actually care that much. If something takes one or two days, the person driving the mail truck, if they have to slam on the brakes, uh, nobody even knows. <laughs> so, yeah, because <laughs> it's not your boss's business. If you drive for a living, if somebody cuts you off and you have to slam on your brakes. Have you ever had a delivery person just give up delivering to your place? That's happened a couple of times. Hello. How the tech are you? This is our weekly tech show on Echoplex Media. I am historian Matt. I'm a co-producer and co-host on this show and we're going to jump right into stories. I only have one story today, uh, but it's a, I think it's kind of a fun, fun one. So my uh, title is Wayne, the ultimate bad boss at Amazon. What am I talking about? Well, apparently uh, Amazon delivery drivers at, uh, on Reddit have started to use the name Wayne to refer to their terrible managers of which apparently there are plenty of terrible managers. Uh, this lets them complain about their managers without naming a specific manager. Uh, and Wayne is being blamed for all of the impossible standards that Amazon delivery drivers must meet. This includes the impossible number of packages to de deliver and all including infractions and voiding in infractions. So basically in Amazon delivery vans, they have cameras set up their AI powered cameras set up in the cab of most del delivery vans. And if the driver does anything wrong or makes any kind of mistake, they get an infraction for, for that. And, uh, the managers push them to have no infractions. And of course that is pretty much impossible to do, but, uh, an example of an infraction, this is not with the camera apparently, but, uh, some of the other tracking, but if a driver stops suddenly, they can get a, a brake ding. So a brake infraction. But of course, this could happen if somebody just, if another driver just cuts in front of the van and it's not the fault of the delivery driver at all. It's just kind of absurd. Some of the things they call infractions. What do you guys think? Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. Like everyone who drives has to stop suddenly sometimes. Yeah. And it's yeah. like not nothing like to stop that big vehicle. It's probably not a uh, fun for the driver, even without the infraction, having to slam on the brakes in that big ass fucking vehicle. Like. Yeah. Yeah, and also now you're incentivizing them to not slam on the brakes when they need to. Like that's you're going to create bad out outcomes that way. It's, yeah. It's it's so it's so weird because like, you know, my experience when I've actually like, you know, when you run into the Amazon driver, they're like always super cool. They're like, "Here's your package. Hi. Let me take a picture of you. Have a good day." Like yeah. they're, they're the nicest people in the world, too. <laughs> and you you know, I just feel like I feel like if you keep putting the the screws to people who you know, you've hired, again, my experience have been that they're pretty nice. You're going to start having experiences where the people are maybe not rude to the customers, but they're just going to be like, oh, okay, here's your package. Bye. Like, instead of like the politeness that, you know, it's, it's nice. I, I don't usually run into them. But they're always super cool. And now like, I mean, I, I've heard, we've heard all kinds of stuff. Like remember the reports of them having to pee in water bottles and not being able to take lunch and, and all that. We've heard this over and over and over again. And it's like, it's like, why, why can't you just calm the fuck down? Yeah. Wayne. Yeah, there's just, exactly. <laughs> there's so much pressure on these drivers now. And I, like, I don't know how nice my, the drivers are that, that deliver stuff because, and I don't have anything against them or any, anything, but usually what they end up doing is I, I see them on my, you know, uh, doorbell camera and it's like mid toss of the package to my front door. They're taking a picture and getting out of there, you know, cause they have no time to be nice and, and talk or anything. And I get it. That's fine. Hopefully the stuff's packaged enough that it's not going to break. I mean, really, it should be very well packaged for that sort of thing. But uh, yeah, this the pressure on Amazon drivers are just, it's just insane. Chill out, Wayne. Yeah, chill out. Like there's no, there's, I don't know if, I guess like what they, what they want is to get all these packages done in this amount of time and they don't want to pay these people overtime. But I don't know this, 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 I don't think that consumers actually care that much if something takes one or two days, do you know what I'm saying? I think that, yeah. Yeah. I think that Amazon pushed this same and next day delivery to try to differentiate themselves. But it's like a, it's like a thing that people don't care about. I'll, 
all uh, all things being equal, if the delivery time isn't super extended, I try to just order from eBay instead of Amazon because at least when you order from eBay, there's like some chance that the you know it's just some person <laughs> selling you this item yeah. who isn't being asked to piss in a uh, water bottle <laughs> or something like, and then like they hire like a um like the post office who has like unionized employees who are uh, uh, treated pretty okay. So like, yeah, this is sure. The supply chain's a little bit slower on it and, and the deals aren't always as good or whatever, but also, I mean, I like paying with PayPal, but uh, I'd just rather buy it that way because like, it's, it's just such a, the process, it seems like the people along the way are more likely to be treated uh, with respect. And like, for example, the, uh, the, the person driving the mail truck, if they have to slam on the brakes, uh, nobody even knows. <laughs> So, yeah, because <laughs> it's not your boss's business if you drive for a living, if somebody cuts you off and you have to slam on your brakes, unless you have a good relationship with your boss, you're like, oh, man, this I almost biffed it today. This guy just pulled right out in front of me. I'm glad I I'm glad the brakes on these trucks are good. We would we would have had a problem today. And this is this is, you know, these stories keep coming out. And I just wonder if, if it even matters, like if people care or if Amazon's just so convenient and has everything that it that people are just not going to, that people will never stop using it no matter how bad the PR is. I feel like a lot of it is that Amazon acts as, as a monopoly. I mean, they're not, they're not a monopoly in online marketplaces. There are other marketplaces, but they have so much power over online marketplaces that, you know, even, even though there are other marketplaces, they can still exert force on those other marketplaces and do things like, uh, you know, fixing prices, uh, even for like areas of the internet that they don't control. Right. Or they can price gouge on hot items so that, because they can take a little bit of a loss or they can even, they can even force some of their bigger, uh, retailers that are on there to take a loss. And, you know, then you, you know, you're like, well, I'd really like a hundred bucks off this thing. So it's 300 instead of 400. And that's, you know, that's a, you know, that's a pretty big chunk of a $400 purchase. That's a quarter of the price. So. They can also do things like track what's selling well and make their own terrible version of that product yeah, and to sell and promote it over other products. Yeah. I mean, people have always done that, but the difference is like, like if there were like knockoffs or like items inspired by other items, there was like competition because the people that would make the knockoff or whatever didn't also own the marketplace. So it's like one thing, like competition is good, but competition from the guy that owns the store, maybe not so great. <laughs> Because he could, yeah. the guy that owns the store could recommend his own product. And I mean, we've seen versions of that where like Safeway or Lucky or whatever has their own store brand, but they're not like, I mean, they control the marketplace, but only insofar as you've walked into that particular store. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if anybody has brand loyalty to Safeway Select, although I, I both say <laughs> that their pasta sauce is superior to the expensive stuff most of the time. It's, it's, it's pretty wild. You know, it's again, stores have done this forever where they kind of have white label versions of products sold by like national brands or whatever but i think this is dramatically different at the height of its um popularity or whatever safeway wasn't amazon right yeah amazon is global and um there's no like boutique i mean there are kind of like etsy and whatever is like a boutique version i suppose of amazon but it's not like where you go where in your it's different too because like the safeway is in your neighborhood but then you have like different little shops around your neighborhood and it's like a very different scenario because you're you maybe have some affinity toward the local shop, right? Because they're, for whatever reason, just at the local shop in your community. And you're like, well, I'm going to go shop at the little local shop. Maybe they, they have something the other place doesn't have. Or, oh, the lady at the cashier, oh, the lady that, you know, the same lady's there every day and she's hella nice. Or there's any number of reasons why it's like completely different when it's an in-person interaction versus, you know, versus online. And people still didn't like it when Walmart would come into their community. But this is incredibly different. This is This is wildly different. And not, not for nothing. I am shopping for a, for a specific piece of equipment and, uh, Amazon never has it. That's, uh, Um, that's a, that's a different matter. (laughs) I want to make it also the problem of like Amazon controls a lot of our internet infrastructure. So even if like, you know, you've got some other marketplace, the chances that that marketplace depends on Amazon's infrastructure is still really high. And then Amazon has even more power to, to exert influence over that other marketplace. You know, it'd be kind of like if, if like Walmart owned the building that Best Buy was in, like owned all the buildings that Best Buy (laughs) were in, like Best Buy had to pay rent to Walmart and then Walmart could be like, oh, 
We just came out with a new TV that's a little higher price than yours. We're going to raise all your rent. <laughs> what were you going to say, Matt? Uh, a point of clarification, because, you know, I'm in Florida and we don't have Safeways. So to, to explain it to, uh, to, to other Floridians, Safeway is a crappier version of Publix. <laughs> Right. Public it's like rules. a, it's like a legacy. It's like a legacy grocery chain in, uh, yeah. mostly the West coast. I'm just making fun of that. Just, uh, Publix is a very popular grocery store, <laughs> grocery chain here. Um, it's like a Piggly Wiggly, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been to a Piggly, <laughs> Piggly Wiggly. I thought it was but, like uh, Publix a Publix is like a Florida based, uh, grocery chain, um, I, that is just well known for having really good stuff. I, for a long time, didn't even know Piggly Wiggly was real. I just thought it was something they made up on a TV show or something. Like, <laughs> I think I've seen them. I don't know if I've ever been in them. I wouldn't go to a place called a Piggly Wiggly. I don't know. Maybe I would. It's a cute name. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye on Wayne, I guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this is the bad. This, Wayne, Wayne, this is like a, a bad version of a, a Wayne's World, I suppose. <laughs> right. That's what we're going to start. Exactly. Call, we'll start calling Amazon Wayne's World. <laughs> but do you like just real quick? Did was there any indication that these these manager? I mean, this is like almost like a question that answers itself. Is there any indication that these managers also maybe are under massive pressure from the people above them, and it's like they say the shit rolls downhill? There's no like obvious, uh, you know, sign of that happening. But we know that's happening. Um, they don't seem to understand like what they're doing because you know one of the complaints was a, a guy on on Reddit was like, well. You know, my manager was complaining that I was getting all these infractions. So the first time he went out in a van, he got two infractions. <laughs> it was just like, <laughs> yeah, of course, you can't like avoid the fact you can't assume people are going to be able to do stuff perfectly and not get infractions if you have cameras in the cab. Jeez. I think it should be illegal to, to have a camera in the cab of a Like yeah. if the driver wants to have a dash cam, they could be able yeah. to request that so that if there's an accident, they could prove that it's not their fault. But that's the dash cam is pointed away from you. <laughs> right. Like yeah. this camera is pointed at you. You should be able to be like, no. In fact, they sh you shouldn't, yeah. you, they should, it should be illegal. This, that should, that, that yeah. should be illegal. You're spending all day in there with a camera pointed right at you. Dude. Yes. I mean, they're probably also doing things like timing how long from the time you get out of the vehicle to the time you get back in to keep driving. I mean, yeah, I, can't, well, I can't imagine I they're not doing that too. I don't know about that, but they did say in the article that if you do the calculations of how many packages they're getting and how much time they have to deliver everything, they have two minutes per package to deliver, uh, which means not just getting out of the, the van and dropping it off and get back in, but also driving to the next stop. You ever been to somebody's apartment complex that's a little weird? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Trying to explain to someone like, okay, I know my apartment starts with an E, but you have to go to the D building. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. Right. Like, a, like a friend of mine, yeah, a friend, a friend of mine, um, I will call them a nighttime friend, uh, lives in Fremont. And um, the first time I went to his place... I was like, what's your, you know, what's, what's your apartment number? He's like, that's really going to be pretty useless. Actually. I think I'll just meet you. <laughs> I think I'll just meet you outside of the building. <laughs> he's, he's like, I know, he's like, I know you're smart, but you're never going to find my apartment. <laughs> so, yeah. No matter how smart you are, if the people that made the apartment numbering scheme weren't smart, you're not or, gonna or, find or, it. or, or if they were so smart, that they outsmarted themselves in the design. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It seems to me like that apartment complex, it's like a like the numbers go kind of in a circle, sort of. So as you get closer to the inside of the the, the complex, that the numbers get higher, but they're not like in rows <laughs> in any sort of yeah. meaningful way. <laughs> it's it's pretty wow. weird. It's a pretty it's a pretty weird setup. Um and Have then I found heard? out what he, then I found out what he pays and I'm like, oh they're they're they're, they're you can't find your apartment and they're robbing you. <laughs> But yeah, uh, imagine you you're the Amazon me? driver and you've never been to that, that, that particular complex and you don't know that the, the numbers sort of go in a spiral. So two yeah. minutes, two minutes, you're just going to, it'll take you two minutes just to figure out that you don't know how the hell to find the apartment. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have you ever had a delivery person just give up delivering to your place? That's happened a couple of times. And when I was in California, cause I had a, it wasn't that hard to find. I gave very easy instructions, very clear instructions. I thought, but I had somebody just like, oh, I just left your, those DoorDash. I just left your food by the pool. So uh, go get it. <laughs> well, as long as they told oh you immediately and put it like under a chair or something. <clears throat> yeah. The only no, they put it on a table that was in the pool area, like next, next to the pool. Did they put any candles? Um, and like, I, they didn't read the instructions, I'm sure, but. 
The yeah, only, they the just only, gave up. I only lived in, well, well, I only, yeah, when I was in San Jose, I lived in a big, big complex and my yeah. balcony faced the street, but getting from the street to my front door was a mission. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I believe it. Like just, I'll lower a basket from the balcony. Well, no, I'm <laughs> um, in there. <laughs> like when, when I had pizza delivery, I told them, I'm like, pull up on the street and uh, tap your horn. Yeah. And I came out to the balcony. I'm like, don't worry. I'll be out in a sec. I'll come pick up the pizza. <laughs> but yeah, you're thinking, you think about like, okay, like in like the suburbs or wherever I live, maybe that's okay. But when you start getting into like denser areas and you got a building where maybe you can't even necessarily get into the front door of the building or something, you, there's just all these reasons that it could take you 10, 12 minutes to deliver a package, not because you're lazy, but because of like obstacles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All bad. That's all bad. Again, that's yeah. uh, that's why uh, the post office, everybody, the post office. And maybe if yeah. like apartment buildings are going to charge you like three thousand dollars for like a two bedroom apartment, maybe they could have like a mail room or or like a map that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess that's what's going on with Amazon. Thank you for watching. How the tech are you? And if you like what we do, give the video a like and consider subscribing. It really helps the channel. Check out all of our other shows at EchoplexMedia.com. And you can support us at patreon.com slash echoplex and, and eplex.store. You can check out another video on the screen right now. Have a great tech and week.